This is the only Fortnite setting video you'll ever have to watch. We're going to be going through absolutely every setting and cutting out all the BS and showing you exactly what is going to affect your performance and why. Now, if this video helps like you did for all of these people, drop a like, subscribe. And as promised, we're just going to get straight into this. Starting off in the video tab underneath display. Here you'll have three options underneath window mode. So full screen, windowed full screen and windowed. The best setting here is objectively going to be full screen. There's no other way around this. This gives your system the highest priority for Fortnite. So for the game itself, which reduces input delay and maximizes fps windowed full screen and windowed mode what they do is they split resources with other background processes which you know just isn't needed and in turn that induces input delay because the lower fps you have especially if it's unstable equals the more input delay and lack of responsiveness moving on to resolution here you'll have three options by default 1920 by 1080 1600 by 900 and 1280 by 720 these are all 16 by 9 aspect ratios so they'll all fit your display the same neither of these are custom or stretch resolutions basically but the best here is going to be 1920 by 1080 even if you have a higher resolution monitor. So if you're a 4K, 3K, whatever monitor you have, you want to still be using this for the best performance. And if you're struggling for FPS, it doesn't hurt to go down. So you can go down to 1720 by 1080 but personally, I wouldn't recommend going anywhere below 1600 by 900 so your game still looks good. There are other settings we can use to drop our resolution without having to really tamper with this here. Oh, and the reason why these resolutions are the best is because lower resolutions reduce the number of pixels your GPU, your graphics card needs to render, which in turn of course increases fps vsync you generally want to have this off unless you have a really low end pc and you're struggling to get even 100 fps in some cases with a 60 hertz monitor i do have a full video going over vsync g-sync all of the syncs um and you can check that out if you need to but yeah for the most part have this off frame rate limit you have all of these options right here and limited is probably best in creative if you're free building because again higher fps as long as it's stable will give you a lower input delay but for the most part you want to have this one notch so one above your monitor's refresh rate so for example i'm on 240 so i'm running 360 if you're on 144 you'll run 160 or 165 either or works and if you're on 60 hertz some people will say 120 i guess that's the most popular opinion but in this case you can really go as high as your fps average will go so you can test that for yourself but generally the reason that we go with only one notch above our refresh rate is because this reduces screen tearing and input delay and most these settings will reduce input delay while maintaining a stable performance so while a limited fps is good in creative where you can again maintain that stable performance for the most part in game it's going to cause inconsistent frame timings and thus potentially overheat your system which is a whole nother issue now rendering mode of course for the most part you guys want this on performance i've heard amd users directx 12 can do wonders and if you have a really really low end pc you may want to go on to directx 12 as well but to use potato graphics i'm going to make a full video on that soon but moving down to the graphics tab brightness none of this use interface all of this that has no effect on your performance whatsoever so this is all totally personal preference for visibility and Honestly, I've run a 150, but I have lowered my display's brightness like on the actual monitor. I wouldn't actually recommend having this too high because it can actually cause eye strain, which could actually affect your physical response time. You know, how your eyes register the game. If they're really strained, your reaction times are naturally going to drop. And colorblind mode, this is the best based on testing for a competitive advantage. You can see through the zone and storms a little bit better. Now, graphics quality, 3D resolution. You can set this from 25% to 100%. Obviously, 100% is best for clarity, but I actually recommend 99% that 1% difference actually makes a big difference. Shout out to the boy Corvi who figured this one out. It isn't, again, when I say big difference, it isn't credible, but it's a bigger difference than you'd think it would make for literally, again, 1%. You're not going to notice any difference in your game quality, really. And why not? You know, that's what it comes down to. Why not? If you want an FPS boost, you can drop it down to 90 or 80%. This is typically recommended by Fortnite, but I would say if you have a really bad PC, you can go down to 75%. And I wouldn't go any lower than that because your game's going to start looking very, very horrible. Of course, Nanai Virtualized geometry we don't have the option in this rendering mode performance mode but have this turned off regardless of what you're using view distance this anywhere above medium especially if you have a low end pc what it's going to do is is require more gpu and cpu power in competitive play so particularly like you know later in the game end game and in our case seeing you know far objects isn't as crucial as maintaining high performance and responsiveness which actually probably gives you a better competitive advantage all round. most pros are using either medium or having it near so the lowest setting completely shadows anti-aliasing all that stuff have the off i've made a full video actually on direct x11 settings which i forgot to mention you can go and check that out because they do directly affect actually the settings you don't see in here all the settings that you do see and in that case you know enable them and if you want to be on performance mode for the best performance providing you're not an amd user come back on here and copy these just make sure just double check they're all good for textures you have low medium high or epic for i recommend low or medium for best performance but i recommend low because it does make a difference what this does is it reduces vram usage which relates to your graphics card and i'd only really recommend going any higher so like medium 
wouldn't, wouldn't honestly go any higher than that if you have over six gigabytes of, re of VRAM. But again, for best performance, low is always the option and every pro is using this. Meshes have this on low. It does say right here, increasing the setting will make objects more detailed, but can it reduce performance? And we don't want detailed objects. We want better performance. Advanced graphics now, show FPS. Most people say this doesn't make a difference. There's a guy called Zilli on YouTube. Go and check him out. He has proven that this actually can affect your frames by almost 20 FPS in some cases. Of course, it's dependent on your system. But yeah, having this on, it'll be a little, there'll be a little FPS counter in the corner that is constantly changing. It's constantly updating. And it's an extra thing that your, that I guess your CPU has to cycle and your graphic and your GPU has to render. So yeah, try and turn that off. Also, it's a great placebo. It helps you, you know, not worry. But uh, I suppose I kind of need that. So maybe keep it on. Oh, and also if you have motion blur in here, yeah, get that off. It impacts performance, reduces, reduces visibility, and generally is just disliked if you are a competitive player. Things like more thread rendering, have them on if you have a multi-core CPU, because this will utilize more CPU cores for better performance. But if you're encountering stutters, it's different for everyone. Just turn it off. GPU crash debugging may be in here as well. Turn that off. NVIDIA reflex low latency, have it on on plus boost if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. And moving on now to the game tab, nothing else is really important. I guess in here, while I'm here, I feel bad not mentioning it, but sound quality, having it on low will affect your performance. Wait, or positively affect your performance. Yes, this is better for you. Feed headphones as well, have that off and visualize sound effects. Although it's great for competitive advantage, having it off will give you better frames. Now the game tab, matchmaking region, have this set to Europe. I've heard, oh, sorry, not Europe, but your agile region. I've heard having this set to auto can sometimes connect you to the wrong sub server, but I don't know how true that is. But scrolling all the way down to what actually matters, outside of the video tab, probably one of the biggest FPS boosts you can get would be turning all of these off. Same goes for these two energy features, which are fairly new. And if you scroll up actually, peripheral lighting and NVIDIA highlights also will create a big difference. Also can affect your frames. Now that is literally everything in Fortnite that you will ever need to change. But considering you stuck to this part of the video, I'm going to give you a few additional tips very quickly that maximize your FPS outside of Fortnite. You can do them, you can close your game and do them in Windows in seconds. The first thing, the first thing would be to go into your task manager under startup apps, disable anything here that you do not need. And it will probably be like literally most things. So if Discord is in here, Spotify, maybe your browser launches on startup. You don't need any of that. Just right click, disable. Something that is also really important is to install and update your NVIDIA drivers. This goes for AMD as well. And you can do this with this little guide in the description. It's very, very simple for AMD. It's different. But the key thing here is you don't want to do it through the NVIDIA installer or the NVIDIA experience app or the new NVIDIA app. You want to do it using display driver utility or display driver uninstaller. And it'll ensure that you're not getting any bloatware when, in when installing drivers. Also, if you go into your Windows settings, go over to gaming, game bar, turn this off and game mode. This is one that I'm going to make a full video on. But for Fortnite, in some cases, having this on, which as it says, it optimizes your PC by turning things off in the background. It may actually do the opposite of that and decrease your FPS. Yes, it could be negative. So try this on and off. I know that's annoying to hear, but it can make a difference. I'm going to make a full video on this soon though. And one of the most important things you can do in Windows for performance boost is edit your power plan. So just search up edit power plan, turn both of these off, go back to power options. And you want to be using a custom power plan. So you'll probably be on either power saver, balanced, or maybe high performance already. Now this sounds good, but you can unlock a better performance plan. If you go to Google and search up ultimate performance plan, if you go to this first link also by how to geek, scroll down, copy this, type in CMD command prompt run as administrator, paste this, press enter. And when you close and reopen your power options in here, you'll see an option for ultimate performance.